Time now to round up a big topic from the week and today the Texas House is expected to approve allowing concealed handguns on college campuses. The Senate approved letting license holders bring guns into university classrooms Saturday. The session adjourns tomorrow. Major bills on the budget and border security have already passed, but efforts to further oppose gay marriage statewide stalled. The first session under Governor Greg Abbott is coming to a close, and that's our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also weigh in on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our roundup panel. It's led by our senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico, our news analyst, Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst, Jackie Valley. Good morning again, guys. Good morning. All right, so do you want to talk with the latest on the gun bills? It looks like campus carry is going to pass. Yeah, let's, let, let's just jump right into that, I, I think, first. Mustafa, um, they passed the open carry. Now it looks like campus carry is going to pass. So the, the the Second Amendment folks that were pushing for expanded gun rights, they're going to get everything they asked for. Rather than fix uh, the the rising costs of higher education, which all of us are facing, we're we just we're going to just put more guns in it. That's our solution. Um, I'm going to co contradict what he said earlier. Uh, this the. The swiftness of the priority items that the governor said that he wanted to put through the legislation and the way that they've gone through is a testament to his leadership. And so the fact that guns is, is something that uh, many of the res residents of Texas were very pro-gun. They wanted that as an agenda. They wanted that to go through. The governor said if open carry was to go on his desk, it would go through. So uh, it's one of many priority items, and that was not one of his priority, by the way. Education was, you mentioned education, pre-K education, <laughs> that initiative Rapid fire, through. rapid fire, rapid that fire. Is, that, but that's a big one, <laughs> that's a big one. Jackie and, doesn't understand rapid fire. And a lot fire. of liberals said that <laughs> Republicans don't believe in education, but that was one of his number one priorities. Well, the and governor didn't get everything through, he wanted because that went he, through swiftly. he wanted a, uh, a, a comprehensive ethics bill that failed because of the dark money issue when they wanted, when the uh, Senate approved, I think it was the Senate approved putting through uh, a notice about who was giving dark money. That stalled in the House and the governor didn't get his ethics bill. Well, the governor also did get an infrastructure bill. Which we okay, definitely answer, answer the ethics bill because we're going to move through all of these. You're right; it didn't go through. Okay. And 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 is, <laughs> is the dark money is that is that an issue that should have stalled that bill? Yep, a money in politics is a real problem, and it continues to be in this state. All right, now real quick, let's talk about the budget and the tax cuts. There's a big fight between the House and the Senate over the over the budget and specifically tax cuts. Uh, Dan Patrick wanted what he ended up getting was a property tax cut. The House wanted a um, sales tax cut. It seemed to me the sales tax cut, Jackie, would have been a real tax cut. Um, I was really surprised that they got the cuts that they did and still made the inroads that they did in the other areas to put more money into education and infrastructure. Uh, both Dan Patrick and many strong leaders did say that they were going to make sure that they got their tax cuts and they did. The, the tax cut, the property tax cut, all of the experts are saying the property tax cut will be absorbed by increase in value because they didn't cap that. You mean all $10 a month that we'll be saving? Yeah. Uh, look, it, it, you know, they get to say they gave a big tax cut. It wasn't very big. It's $10 a month. But in return, we're using $3.8 billion that could have been used to really fund pre-K because it was very, you know, it was very limited funding. And it could have been there for infrastructure and doing more things. But now we're getting a $10 a month cut for property owners. That's just not going to be worth it. Well, the pre-K bill is not limited. It's, it's quite extensive. And it's just the beginning of other things that you'll see in education, as the governor has promised. And the infrastructure bill is pretty comprehensive as well. But, but we'll have to vote for it. The infrastructure bill is going to be, there's going to be uh, item but, on, on, on the ballot. But it was a comprehensive infrastructure bill. I mean, that, that is true. Yes. And, and, and if it passes, which I don't know why it wouldn't it if it passes, that will do a lot uh, towards the things that we've been neglecting for a long time. I, I, I think I, my, my hat's off to the legislature for really trying to focus on this stuff. And I think it's good that we're heading in the right direction, but the need is far greater than what we're even doing. And my hat's off to the governor because he said these were my priority items and he got them through. Well, now let's talk about the pre-K for just a minute. I, I, I was in favor of the pre-K bill, but at the same time you say we're going to increase funding in pre-K, Dan Patrick says we're going to force school districts to reduce their their uh, property values, I mean, reduce their exemptions and give a tax cut on the back of the schools. But that how do, you, how do you judge that? But that hasn't happened. That is what happened. That's no. where the tax cut came from. No, not not not. If you look at what Dan Patrick proposed originally, that's not what the the uh, pre-K initiative is. There is a difference. Uh, whenever he said that all of the tax cuts would be coming from the local property taxes, that's not true. 
And if you look at what was actually passed, there are some initiative, there are some measures of that bill, but not all of it, like ta Dan Patrick said. Didn't the property tax cut come straight off the back of school districts? Am, well, I, am I wrong about this? A property taxes fund our, our, our schools. And so if you give a $10 a month cut to every property owner in, in, in Texas, it's going to have an impact from, from school funding. So every time you feel like your schools aren't good enough and your roads aren't good enough, you know, you, got, you have the ability now to buy not even three cups of Starbucks coffee in exchange for giving up those things. Now, gay marriage was a big thing for the legislatures talking about coming into the session, not one of them passed. Yeah, and, and again, our Constitution says that marriage is between a man and a woman, and I think any time that uh, we have any national ruling that says contrary to that, you're going to have discussions in the legislature, but again, 76% of our residents and citizens feel that the Constitution is correct. It should be between a man and a woman. So these bills will continue to come up. if we see the national government trying to intervene and saying this is not a state's right issue. I think the Speaker Strauss made a real effort to try to tamp down on the social conservative legislation and he did a pretty good job. Um, but again, we've got to go back and do some of the bigger things. This session just kind of worked on the edges. Uh, and I, I was hoping for much, much more funding in education and especially in pre-K. But it's a good start. It's a start. And that's, uh, and, and, and again, credit should go where, where credit's done. Governor said that he would try to do this and he has made an effort to do so. So we got less than a minute. I want to talk about moving into the next session two years from now. Where do you see the fights coming in the next session? I see a big attack on Joe Strauss. Well, I, th I think during this election cycle that there's going to be a big push to try to get more Tea Party members elected in the House to put real pressure on him. Um, and, and, you know, he's kind of like the grown-up in the room. He's, he's, he's done a lot of the heavy lifting, and he's done a great job. But it's one guy trying to yeah, hold but up the whole Joe Strauss government. was We've elected seen. by the combination of Democrats and moderate right. Republicans. and he gets elected every time by, the, by that combination. And every session we hear that someone's going to challenge him, and every session he does very well. So, yes, he may have a challenger, but he will be, as long as he wants to sit in that position, he'll be sitting there for a while.